Oh, before we get started, Mar, I have to show you something. It's Super story important. time. It, it is, is story time. time. Super important. So back in like 1994. Irrelevant. Like, Dad got a sweatshirt <laughs> because he loved Coach. Do you remember the TV show Coach? I remember. My, my dad loves Coach. So my dad, not, not too long ago, I was going to get rid of the sweatshirt. It just, you know, he's getting older. It just didn't fit him as well anymore. So wouldn't you know it? Stop. Minnesota State? Minnesota State Golden Eagles, baby. Is that an actual team? No. Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. You have yeah, the no, best and most random shirts. I think yeah, I love stuff like this. This is really what got me started on the, I'm just going to collect random player jerseys, right? Like when dad got this forever ago, thank you, Papa Paul for giving this up. Uh, when dad got this forever ago, I was like, Oh, that's genius. So that's why I've got, you know, Shane Falcon. That's why I bought you, you know, Bobby Boucher. Like it's just, it's owning those jerseys. You can just wear them anywhere and you will universally be accepted. You can walk into Foxborough. You could walk into, you know, anywhere. Does it matter? And you're going to be universally accepted. You could pull for anyone you want when you're wearing a Joe Flacco jersey. Kidding. Shane Falco. Shane Falco. Joe Flacco. Shane Falco. Joe Flacco, on the other hand, no one will like you. Not, not even the Baltimore fans. Not even, like. uh, not even not Flacco's even the Ravens fans. family. <laughs> Is he going to play this year? Uh, who knows? Where is he at? Who cares? Okay. Well, he was. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the Jets depth chart? Do, do I want to? Oh, my God. Mario, Mario, Mario. The Jets depth chart for 2021 is one of the greatest things you'll ever see in your life. Because, one, Joe Flacco, not on it. Two, Sam Darnold, not on it. Three, James Morgan and Mike White are their only quarterbacks on the roster. Tell me what colleges they went to. James Morgan and Mike White. Oh, my God. Florida International. How in the world? No, no, you're cheating. You're I am. cheating. <laughs> <laughs> so, two directional university guys. <laughs> Safe to say. Well, I don't know who they're going for in the NFL draft. Probably quarterback. I feel like quarterback. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like they're going with quarterback. I don't think James Morgan and Mike White are going to be their future. I, I don't think. You know what's so fascinating, though? If the Jets were the Patriots, right? We were here last year with the Patriots. Mm -hmm. Patriots did the same thing last year. No quarterback, right? No quarterback, no quarterback. Like, oh, no, no, no. We, you know, we're, we think we're okay at quarterback. You know, we think we're okay. We live that lie forever. <laughs> the Bills have lived that lie quite a bit, but Billy Joe Hobart. Oh God. Yeah. The ghosts of Christmas Pass are vast in in the Bills organization, but like, does it seem like Corey Davis, Denzel Mims, Josh Doxson, Keelan Cole, Jameson Crowder, they're standing there like. John Travolta in Pulp Fiction looking around. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Who's it's, and that's us the, the thing. ball? <laughs> they keep signing wide receivers. They brought in Ke yeah, Keelan Cole. Like, he drafted receivers. They've still got Crowder. Like, poor Crowder, man. This is why free agents, just be careful where you go. <laughs> Davis was talking about why well, I signed with the New York Jets because Sam Darnold's going to be my quarterback. Whoops. That aged well. <laughs> Oh, Tyler Croft's there. Don't forget Tyler Croft's with the Jets now, too. Speaking of tight ends, Paul, and our condolences to Tyler Croft. Sorry, buddy. But <clears throat> that being said, you brought up an interesting point to me about the Buffalo Bills and Kyle Pitts. Yeah. Yeah, we cut this. I cut that on a short forever ago, right? Names yeah, to know. But yeah. it's... I don't think a lot of people are going in that direction. 
Okay. So I'm interested to see. Now I have my thought thoughts about Kyle Pitts. Um, mm-hmm. and I went through a mock draft. You know how I hate those, but they tend to give you a little bit of insight. You know, if you go for if mock draft, you got to be very, very careful what you choose to read, believe, and or study when you go into mock mm-hmm. drafts. For me, mock drafts, I look for because guys right now they're always just trying to make connections. It's a crapshoot, guys. It's a crapshoot. You don't know where these players are going. Would a guy be a fit? I think everyone is of the mindset that Trevor Lawrence is the best quarterback coming out this year and the Jacksonville Jaguars need a quarterback. So, Mm -hmm. therefore, you make the inference everyone on their board has Trevor Lawrence going number one to Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. Quarterbacks are, like, easy to do. They're very easy. The Browns, they just didn't – we just didn't know where they were going. Were they going for Baker Mayfield? Were they going for Josh Allen? Were they going for Sam Darnold? You knew they were going quarterback. You just didn't know who. Mm -hmm. However, when you get down the board, you start to look at some of these players – and you look at Kyle Pitts, Kyle Pitts and the Buffalo Bills. First of all, Paul, explain to me the fit. Why does Kyle Pitts fit? In, he's a freak. We all know. We all know that. Yeah. How does he fit in Buffalo mm-hmm. versus other teams? I think Buffalo's sort of had a different dichotomy of what you're asking for with your tight ends. Yeah. Like they got rid of their best run blocking tight end and Lee Smith. So, and who have they signed? A receiving tight end in Jacob Hollis. Right. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, they're making no bones about the fact that they just plan to pass. So, you know, when you look at it, again, on paper, on paper, Pitts is a really solid fit for that dynamic because you should not be asking him to pass protect. You should not be asking him to run oh, block. No. These are not things he will do well for you, right? No. But – you know, the Bills are sort of in a different need. Everybody says, well, we, you know, let's draft a running back. Let's draft a running back. The type of running back you want, you'll be able to get in the fifth and sixth round. These small, little, fast running backs who can catch the football. You know, you're basically looking for a punt returner. You know, like it's you're not worried about the run game. Paul, I, when the Bills brought Paul, back their offensive line, didn't that say they're not worried about the run game right now? Paul, blink twice if this is about Matt Breida being signed. <laughs> They don't need a running back because they got Matt Breida. <laughs> they don't need a corner to. They don't need a CB two because they have Dane Jackson. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to say that those two guys aren't my safe words at that position. Okay, <laughs> my safe words. I'm not going to say that they're. I not. I thought it was pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you don't know your friends as well as you think you do. <laughs> <you know>? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> So you bring it in, you, you have – who you have on the roster? You have receiving tight ends. You have Jacob Hollister, okay? You have Sweeney, who hasn't seen a lot of work. You have Knox, who yep. has – I will say this, for as much as people knock on Knox, I think he has the potential to be a weapon in your offense, but he's only going to be the th- fourth, maybe fifth weapon. Right. So you look at it from that standpoint. You have Sanders in there, which we cut an episode – it's going to be over Paul's left shoulder. You talk about he, he supplements the tight end position for you. We did it on a rapid fire. It was an excellent question. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but I will put it in there. But he supplements the tight end position for you because he has all those intermediate routes and he can find the zone, soft zones for you like a tight end would. I love that about Sanders. And I love that about the Sanders signing. Everyone thought he was an immediate replacement for Brown. He's not. Mm-hmm. Okay, You already have that in Gabe Davis. He's your deep threat on a different scale of John Brown. Mm-hmm. So you have Gabe Davis, you have Stephon Diggs, you have Cole Beasley, and now you have uh, Sanders while Knox gets it. Mm-hmm. By infusing a guy like Pitts, who we agree that Dable really doesn't focus on the tight end position too much. And, you know, truth be told, I'm not a Dable apologist. He never had the greatest tight ends when he was that's true. A, yeah, as that's an offensive true. coordinator. I understand that, and that's I will true. give him that. However, for a guy who had a front row seat to Gronk and Hernandez, you know, coaching Gronk directly, mm-hmm. you, you think he would have more of an onus on that position in the EP system, and he just doesn't. Mm-hmm. Right. A, yeah. A team that was mocked, and this is where it's so interesting to me, and this is why the connections and we look at stats and this and that, it's just funny to talk about. Or it's it, not funny, it's interesting to talk about. He's mocked, Kyle Pitts is mocked to go to the Dolphins. Which I don't understand, right? Like, the Dolphins have done this before, right? Like, yes. don't get me wrong. 
if Buffalo wanted to trade a third round pick for Mike Gusecki, I'd be fine with that. And I'm glad you brought his name up because here is the interesting connection. You always talk about connections, Paul. Okay, Brian Flores. Relationships are important. Relationships in the NFL are really, really important. Now, Chris That's- Greer, who's the GM, who I think has done a phenomenal job. If there's a guy I was going to probably tout for the work that he's done with draft picks, player personnel, and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm not trying to blow up the Dolphins, but here's a, the guy basically got four first-round picks for Laramie Tunsil. I mean, right. <laughs> come on now. Yeah. This guy from 1994 to 1999 was a, was a scout and an intern for the Patriots. Okay, I think that's great. It's a good thing to know. I mean, he was a director of college scouting for the Miami Dolphins from mm-hmm. 2007 to 2015. So that's his history. Ding, now ding, you, ding. Yeah, now you look at Brian ding, ding. Flores. We talked about him. Right. Oh, he came from New England. But I don't think everybody knows the depth of where he came from New England. From 04 to 2018, he was with the Patriots. 2004 to 2018. In that time frame, in that time frame, Paul, from 2010 to 2012, they had both Gronk and Hernandez, and it seemed to be an unstoppable duo of tight ends mm-hmm. that nobody could contend with. You don't remember who the wide receivers were on the Patriots from those years because it didn't matter. Now, you mentioned Mike Gusecki, mm-hmm. okay? Now, I'll go back to his combine results because that's the easiest comparison we can have to Pitts. So if Miami wanted to go this route, he was a second-round pick, okay, 4-5-4, four, in the 40, mm-hmm. I guess Pitts had like a 4-4, okay? How much did Gusecki do on the bench? He's 6'6", 250, by the way, when he came out. 6'6", 250. What was his bench? I mean, we talked about this uh, with yes. the episode the other day. So yeah. I'm thinking like 15, 14, 15. Like, he's a thin frame guy. Okay, so Gusecki is 6'6", 250. Yeah. Pitts is 6'6", 245. Right. They both did 22. Oh, my God. I didn't realize Gusecki put up that many. He, he he did. Now, vertical jump, Gusecki had 41, Pitts had 33. That's not even close. Now, broad jump, you were touting Kyle Pitts' broad jump. He's 10-9, right? That's a big broad jump. Guess what Gusecki's was? No idea. 10-8. Okay. Three-cone, Gusecki was actually faster than Pitts. <laughs> but... My, my point is, when combining, combining the, the, the combine numbers, we saw how much of a weapon Gusecki could be when you know he was actually used properly down there. Mm-hmm. You talk about Greer spending time in New England. You talk about Flory spending time when he saw firsthand as an offensive assistant for one of those years mm. how him and Gronk and Hernandez played together. Now I tell you about putting Kyle Pitts and Mike Gusecki on the same field at the same time. We talk about connections. You you don't think that that would be yeah. a natural progression for that and for Tua to have down there? Now, this well, isn't is a Dolphins channel. I'm just trying to tell – I could see him going to the Dolphins and being yeah. a pain in the ass for the Bills for the next five years. I mean, if you have a quarterback without a great arm, the greatest solution is to have good tight end play. Right? I mean, it's, it's an easy solution. And I'll You're even appeal to you, sure. Paul. I'll even appeal to you. Gasecki's on a contract here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. So bringing Pitts in doesn't I, seem like a bad idea. Right. No, I'm I'm with you there. But, you know, I, when I look at Kyle Pitts, um, I, there's a lot to like. Mm-hmm. But the fact is he's a wide receiver, right? Is that, he's not a tight end. He's okay. a wide receiver. All right. That's, I mean, that's what you're drafted. When you draft him, you're drafting him because he beats one-on-one coverage. You don't ask him to block because he's not going to be able to do it. Um, is he a top Okay, let me ask you this, right? Looking at the last four or five drafts, we see wide receivers go early, right? Mm-hmm. We see normally yeah. two wide receivers go in the top 10 to top 15 every year with really without fail, regardless of the class. Yes. Is Kyle Pitts one of the best three wide receivers in the country? Well, let me see here. You got Waddle from Bama. You mm-hmm. got Chase. You got Pitts. Yeah. Are you yeah. talking – now we got to be very clear about this because this is something that the Bills have, st- have stepped in quite a bit. Coming out, Sammy Watkins was considered one of the best offensive weapons in mm-hmm. that draft. Right. Not wide receivers because he caught like sixty percent of his passes behind right. the line of scrimmage. Yep. But is he the? As far as offensive weapons, I would say yes. Pitts is one of the best offensive weapons coming out. As far as receivers go, yeah, I would take Waddle or Chase before Pitts. Right. 
So why so why are we talking about Pitts as a top ten pick? But that that's that's what I'm saying. It's yeah, like yeah, if yeah. you're Buffalo and you're targeting Pitts, right? Let's say Pitts is your guy. You look at it and say, we have to leave the first round with Pitts. You're kicking a first round pick down the road, right? You're giving up 2022. I think that's a conversation for another day, though, Mar. Like giving up future first round. Oh, yeah, picks. Absolutely. absolutely. I think that's a conversation for another day. But you got it, you're gonna have to give up a pick and you're gonna have to get to 12, right? Like that's mm. it. You're gonna have to get between 10 and 12 to get pits because Waddle, Chase, even Devontae Smith may go before pits. Just because he's labeled as a tight end doesn't mean he's you draft him as a tight end. Right. He doesn't do tight end things for you. Is he Darren Waller? Well, I mean, that's a comparison because you don't ask Darren Waller to block very much either, but Darren Waller can in line block for you. He can. Kyle Pitts yeah. cannot, right? At this point, he cannot. Uh, let's not forget Darren Waller was a wide receiver who got transitioned to tight end and mm-hmm. then spent two years in purgatory learning how to block and kicked because around he's in a West coast, not an EP. That's why right. he's in a West coast, not an EP. Right. But right. what it does is for the Buffalo bills, it creates matchup problems for everybody else. Now, well, well I think that's an interesting <sighs> point. You, so Mar, I think you're going to get to something. And I, I just want to ask you before you get there, Kyle Pitts in 2021, are you drafting Kyle Pitts for 2021 are you drafting Kyle Pitts because of 2022 and beyond? Am I? If you're Buffalo. Am I starting him? Or am I drafting him in the first round? Am I trading up to get him? Oh, you have to. Yeah, if he's I'm not trading up to, Yeah, if I'm trading up to get Pitts, I have to. Because you need an immediate return on your investment. You even said with the signings that they've had. You know, I mean, we did, we talked about it on the joke episode, the, the April Fool's, you know, trading Allen. You even said it to me. Your first argument to me was you're doing all of these moves to make a run now. You can't – and you're going to trade Josh Allen for Trevor Lawrence. You know I mean? It was a joke, but it was right. it was a very true statement. You're not going to trade away. You're not going to trade up in future value for Kyle Pitts if you're not going to play him in 2021. You have to right. play him in 2021. As far as the Dolphins go, you talk about the Dolphins. If they were to pick him up, they're losing Gusecki probably next year because they have a lot of guys they have to resign. Pitts will be on his, on his rookie deal still, and he'll still be in that offense. It's an it, it's a Shane Gailey offense. I understand that. Mm-hmm. Then you look at what New England was doing. They signed two top tier tight ends. Mm-hmm. Copycat league, Paul. Well, I mean, you yeah. you got to dethrone the Bills. Now let me repeat that for everyone that thought that they heard it wrong. You have to dethrone <laughs> the Bills in the East now, and these teams are doing with two tight end sets, which was a problem for Buffalo in right. 2020 and 2019. So these two tight end sets that you're going to have that have given them fits, you know, okay, hey, New England did it. Why don't we draft Pitt? As, as a Dolphins fan, as, as a Dolphin, you're saying, hey, let's draft Pitts, let's do this. If you're Buffalo and you go get Pitts, you're you're kind of stabbing back at the AFC East going, ah, we got Knox and Pitts now. Okay, mm-hmm. wh- what are you guys going to do? Can Knox block? I think he's going to be a better blocker than Pitts right now in his career. Plus, he's already been in the league. So, as far as what, there's only there's only one football that can go around though, Paul. Like, right. eventually Pitts is going to get tired of only having four targets a game. Mm-hmm. So, do I see it in the scope of the offense and how the offense is run now? I don't think you draft Pitts. But if you're willing to change the scope of your offense to make this guy more of a, 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 a if this guy is a second in targets behind Diggs, I'm fine mm-hmm. with it. Plus, you still got Beasley. If Beasley got, I mean, you remember, you're not going to probably have Beasley or, or Sanders next year. Right. So well, you that's, have, I think that's the argument for Pitts, yes, right? I think it's an fits, easy, yeah. right. I think that's an art. I think it's an easy island to, to find yourself on because you look at not 2021 necessarily, but you no, look okay. at 2022 and say, well, you're going to be minus sanders maybe mine is beasley and then you look around the room and you say okay well dawson knox will be entering a contract year sweeney will be entering a contract year you know like you start looking at the position up and down and you look at what else is in the room and you're like "Uh, i don't know if drafting 30 fixes all this for me all the time no right i mean Mm -hmm. uh, buffalo is where they are because of a high-powered offense i think we can't forget that Right. No the offense got them where they were. And I think a lot of times we just kind of fall into the fact of, well, the bills always seem to manage to put it together on defense, but last year they really didn't, you know, compared mm-hmm. to what we were used to seeing. So offense is what is feeding this organization right now. 
And to think that they're going to go into the draft going defense, 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 I think is a mirage, right? So a player like Kyle Pitts, I got to be honest with you. He's not off the board for Buffalo, but I think it just depends on what you're going to value current draft to future draft against. Is Buffalo going to give up a first or future first round pick for a first round player? Well, guess what they haven't done before? Give up a future first round pick for a player, right? When did they ever give? In under Bina McDermott? Oh, not under Bina McDermott. No, no, no. I'm That's what saying. I'm saying. I'm under saying under Bina McDermott. They've acquired they've never a future given up, first. For, right. They've you know. never given up future considerations like that big a commitment. They've never given up that big a commitment to a player with zero promise. That's why the Diggs deal made so much sense. Well, You're just got fifth wide receiver off the board. We're going to get Stephon Diggs. All right. I know he's going to play. Well, I, I mean, know we can play today. It's different to when you're building something versus when it's built. You went from... To, you went from a you know what you were able to build the framework that you were able to build in Buffalo. Now, mm-hmm. if you think you're a Kyle Pitts away from putting your offense even more over the top, right? To compete with a Kansas City, to compete with a Green Bay, to compete with a God forbid Tampa Bay, if right. they're there again, you look at that. Okay, if that's your thought process, I, we don't know what the process is because I think giving up. Capital in this draft is more likely than giving up capital in the future future years. That's why I think it would be so great to have capital this year because, and this probably bleeds into another episode, what is really out there that guys have seen mm-hmm. that you can, you can honestly say, I want more capital in this draft. Right. So maybe well, that's another I'm, episode. And maybe, Mar, you know, when you start looking at the teams that are ahead of Buffalo, right, and who you got to jump – to get to Kyle Pitts, you got to jump quite a ways. Right? You do. You do. You got to jump quite a ways. But there's going to be teams that, uh, you know what? I'm just going to say it. New England's sitting at 15, and Kyle Pitts could slip to 15, and New England will have no interest in him. Arizona's at 16. Is Arizona a tight end away? Well, they brought in a lot of pass catchers, right? They brought in A.J. Green. They're, well, they're clearly interested in improving the pass game. Are they a tight end away? All right, is that their supplement for losing AJ Green and Fitzgerald next year? Right, so Arizona's a team to watch out for. Vegas is right behind them. They've got Waller. You're not worried about them. Miami's at 18. You got to you know, skip like, Miami twice. You really have to get to to five. Oh my God, get to five. Yeah, I know it's early, but are you okay? No, I'm just saying where you'd have to go to get no. him. Oh my God, no. Because I think Miami would. I think Miami's legitimately in on him. I really think I think you'd have to skip Miami. Miami's not going to let them go past eighteen. That's that's I'm, a steal for them at eighteen. I'm sorry, Detroit would be more in on Pitts at seven. Okay, don't bring me the Miami ghost of six. Eric Ebron now. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's I think that matters, right? You had Ebron, does. you have OJ Howard, like these were guys yes. that were touted as top picks because they were pass catchers. And what happened to them? Right, fizzled. Fit completely yeah. fizzled. But but is it a generational issue? Because there's no illusions that Kyle Pitts is just a really big wide receiver. There's no illusions about it, right? They mm-hmm. went full Jimmy Graham on Pitts right from the start of Florida. Full Jimmy Graham treatment. Does that make him different than O.J. Howard? Does that make him different than Eric Ebron? Does that make him more ready for the NFL? As far as the new NFL goes... I mean, we talk about these tight ends now and how the transition is coming about. I mean, Eric E. Brown went to North Carolina. Um, who else were we talking about the tight ends? Howard. Howard he went, went to, to Bama. Bama. So, right. you know, it, you're more of a blocker in a Bama offense. UNC, they run the ball. They have a pro style. You know what I mean? So they went to Detroit, and then they went to Tampa. You know what I mean? It's, it depends on the systems they go into. Mm-hmm. You're talking about putting pits in an EP system. That's almost like gold. You know what right. I mean? Because uh, of the makeup of the kid. But could he be more ready? Time will tell what system he goes to. I mean, that's that's the bottom line of it. What system is this kid going to go into to allow him to flourish? So, I mean, the Broncos are at nine. Carolina's at eight. Detroit's at seven. Detroit's not going to do that again. Carolina's not going to do that again. Or Carolina's not going to do that at all. Broncos? They've already got Fant. They, they got Noah Fant. Plus, they... <laughs> They've got a really group of nice receivers in Den- in Denver. Mm-hmm. You know, they got Patrick. They've Dallas? Got, they've got... 
Dallas at ten. I could see Jones pulling the trigger on that. Well, they got they got really expensive wide receivers and not gonna be able to keep. At some mm-hmm. point you gotta look at, you know, making changing your options. Right. Yeah. And with as dominant as Winton was for so long, you have to know they're thirsty for that taste again. Would I like Pitts on the Bills? Two things. One, if the offense is willing to adjust. Mm-hmm. Yes. Two, what do you have to give up to get him? I think it's too much. I, I think you're having too much future considerations right now. I, I'm i with you there, right? The only first-round pick by being a McDermott to not start like 14 games is that Oliver, right? Like if you're picked in the first round, the expectation is you're going to start every Absolutely. single game. No question. And are you going to invest a first-round pick in 40 targets? No. Right. What's the rate of, rate of return there? Right. I'll yeah, say 64 I, targets. I'll go to that. I'll give him four a game. Yeah, but that's I think that's a stretch. You know, like no, what I'm it, saying is I, though, I, like four a game is a, a number to have. You have Pitts on right. your team. You know what I mean? But we've talked about this before, Mark. Is Sanders the supplement to drafting to getting the tight end you want? Right? Is he the supplement? Like we talked about Sanders being the supplement to the tight end game for what's on the roster. I think that's a very valid argument. But we've seen the Bills. We they do this all the time. Is Sanders the 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 bridge is he the is he the Matt Burrito where listen we're just gonna fill the profile and then if we can get the guy in the draft great if we don't get the guy in the draft that's fine we bought ourselves another year to get back to there I would say yes if he signed for the contract Breida signed with he didn't sign for a Breida contract he's not on no, veteran he minimum not. he's not an he insurance not. policy he's gonna right. play yeah you signed him because he's gonna play he's gonna supplement that position if he signed for the same contract Breida did I could say yeah. They've got their insurance policy if they can't get him. So okay. that he's still a possibility. I think, okay. yeah, maybe in that respect, because he signed for the contract that he signed for, if you cut him, you're going to take a hit, which you can't really do. But I don't think – I think Breed is more of an insurance policy than um, Sanders is. This episode's a lot deeper than just talking about Kyle Pitts. It is. But I think – because we hinted on something that I think we probably need to talk about, and it is – if the bills trade up, oh. where's the limit? And what's the value of a 2021 draft pick versus a 2022 draft pick? Because there's a, there's a huge dynamic difference between 2021 and 2022. There's a, there's a very big difference. And I don't know who's going to talk about it, but I think we're stupid enough to. So we should th- probably talk. about. I it. think we should. And you know what? <laughs> we haven't had a potpourri episode like this in a while. And I'm, I hope the fans <laughs> can't spell potpourri without P.O.T. Thank you, Marcel Darius. I think we should make them wait 48 hours before we talk about Ooh. 2020 versus 2021. We'll be-